All right, today we're gonna to take a look at this particular compound machine, and we're going to use this to highlight an issue that comes up with quite a few compound machines. And that is when we start dealing with simple machines like levers and pulleys, along with gears. Now the issue that comes up when dealing with simple machines alongside gears is that simple machines are typically dealt with in terms of distances or linear distances. Uh, for example, when looking at something like the IMA of a lever, we define the IMA of a lever or really any simple machine as distance in or distance out. That is the distance which the input side of the simple machine travels divided by the distance over which the output side of the simple machine travels. Now here we have a compound machine with an input here and an output over here. Now rather than talking about a simple machine like a lever, uh, let's talk about gears here. Now when dealing with gears, we talk about rotations as opposed to linear values, looking at gear ratio and how we define it. We could talk about gear ratio uh, with reference to tooth counts on gears, or we could talk about the relationship between the torques produced, or talk about the angular distance traveled by one gear as opposed to the other gear. But what I want you to realize is whenever we're dealing with gear ratio, we're talking about rotational quantities. And so the issue that comes up when dealing with a compound machine like this, where we have a lever turning a gear set, which is in turn rotating a drum connected to a, a load, we have to deal with both simple machines in terms of linear quantities, as well as dealing with our gears, which are entirely rotational quantities. And I want you to think about linear quantities versus rotational quantities as kind of being like two completely different languages. And so suddenly we're trying to combine these two languages into one thing that makes sense, and that can be a little bit challenging. Ultimately, what we're trying to do in this problem is find the total ideal mechanical advantage of this compound machine. And in order to do that, there's a couple ways through this, this mess. Uh, we could look at these gears as effectively wheels and axles, uh, and we could figure out their size, uh, but that would require additional dimensions here. I don't wanna do that. I wanna show you a different way of looking at compound machines when we have both simple machines and gears combined. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to separate out our gears from our levers. Now I want you to realize this lever right here, this is like the input side of a lever and the output side of the lever is really this drum over here. So imagine we were to take this drum and to remove it from this axle, take these gears out completely and we were to just attach the drum over here to this lever, what would we have? All right, am I really gonna color all these in again? I am, this looks like crap. All right. All right, that's a lot better here. Now we can see what's going on. Uh, what I've done here is I've taken this lever, or the input side of this lever, and I've connected it to the output side of the lever here. Uh, and so you see, we've got an input side of the lever and an output side of the lever. Now I know this looks like a gear. This is actually a drum around which the string is, is attached. It's really just a wheel and an axle, uh, or really it's just the opposite side of this first class lever. We've got an input side and an output side and the string connected to the load here, I drew attached right there. So we can treat this just as a simple first class lever. Then separately down here, we have our gear train. This is a simple gear train. We've got a 25 tooth gear driving a 50 tooth gear. And so what we've done is we've broken up our compound machine into a simple machine and a gear train. And if we wanna come up with the total IMA of this entire compound machine, all we need to do is work out the IMA and gear ratio for our simple machine and gear train. Looking at the lever first, we know the IMA of a lever, as we talked about earlier, is D in over D out. And we find the lever has an IMA of eight. Looking at our gear train, we know gear ratio is tooth count on the output over tooth count on the input. And much like when we're dealing with regular compound machines, where we have a series of simple machines connected together, 
All we need to do here to find the total IMA is simply multiply together our IMAs by our gear ratios. And we find the total IMA is 16. So it's important to realize when we have a compound machine where there's simple machines combined with gears, what we need to do is separate out the simple machines from the gears and then work out the IMA and gear ratio of those machines separately. We have to do that because simple machines are all based on linear terms and gears are based on rotational terms and the two terms don't really combine. And so we have to be a little bit clever in how we work out our IMA for a compound machine. So this is how we deal with compound machines that include simple machines and gears. And that's all for now.